What if you could fire a laser at the sky and make it rain? Oh, that sounds more interesting. Dave Malkoff explains. Just another stormy, wet afternoon in central Florida. But what if you could pick up all this rain and move it where it's needed? Texas or California? What if a laser could start the rain? So you can almost use it to set it off. Matt Mills got into lasers as a kid. It's just innately cool. Now he's part of a team of scientists and military backers on the cutting edge of a new technology, making lasers powerful enough to reach up here into the sky where a thunderstorm is just about to start. In the near future, a push-button storm starter could be a real thing. Just imagining this situation, if there was a rain cloud that was gonna pass over an area of drought and not rain, you could, you know, theoretically induce the rain and get the rain where it's needed. That storm starter isn't the laser beam itself, but rather a popping energy that comes off of much higher power beams than this one. The problem is those pops have always had trouble getting into the sky. Now Matt has discovered a way to get the laser to pop all the way in the clouds. In theory, that's what starts a storm. We created a cloud of our own behind Matt's lab. A few months ago, Matt's colleagues in Arizona got this working experimentally. The next step is to get it to work in the sky. The particles in the air are rubbing together, forming static electricity, and the conditions are now right. And they just need to be triggered now. Does this concern you that you may be messing with Mother Nature and doing something that you don't completely understand up here in the cloud? I, I, I mean, I suppose that's always a danger, but we're not even near to the case where it could be dangerous yet, so not too much. It's almost like an on-off switch for a thunderstorm. That's the idea behind it. Right here in the cloud. Yep. In Orlando, Dave Malkoff, The Weather Channel. Absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And it could change a lot of things, uh, like these areas of drought that we're watching in the West, if it actually works. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental, however, in the laboratory so far it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. We realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. This time we're bringing in the laws of physics, rather than simply uh, waving our hands and uttering mumbo jumbo. <laughs> we're actually using trillion watt lasers now. And in the laboratory, sure enough, they precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity down the, down the beam. So what does it mean for drought areas that, that need to have rain for crops, and if they don't have them, uh, there's you know, the consequences of famine? Well, the bad news is, if it's a clear blue sky, it's not going to do anything at all, because it only takes water vapor that's already in the air and condenses it. However, for floods, for agriculture, for farmers, for people planning wedding parties, uh, football <laughs> games, you name it, outdoor events and agriculture and flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification. Incredibly mm. interesting. Professor Micho Kaku, thank you so much. Mm. Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Amerika Serikat, di atas segala retorikanya, kerap melakukan berbagai cara licik untuk memenangkan perang, 
termasuk melancarkan operasi Popeye saat Perang Vietnam. Seperti saat mereka menggunakan bom atom untuk melulantakkan Hiroshima dan Nagasaki karena kewalahan menghadapi Jepang saat Perang Pasifik. Amerika Serikat juga melakukan sebuah strategi perang terlarang di Vietnam saat menyadari mereka keteteran menghadapi ketangguhan tentara Vietcong. Proyek yang oleh beberapa orang disebut seperti meminjam tongkat Dewa Zeus itu sendiri sebenarnya sempat disangkal oleh Amerika. Namun, saat akhirnya terungkap, dunia murka hingga akhirnya sepakat membuat aturan untuk melarang praktik tersebut saat perang. Strategi apa yang dimaksud? Mari kita simak ulasannya. <tuh>